All right, howdy. This is a little bit of an impromptu stream here. I'm going to be going ahead and doing a playthrough of Newton. So this is going to be a solo playthrough, and you're welcome to ask any questions or anything in the comments if you'd like. But just wanted to play the game to try to run through it again. I've only played it a couple times and want to make sure I've got all the rules here. And you're welcome to join me on this live stream of it. So let's go ahead and crack in. So this is a little sneak preview as to what is going to be out and about tomorrow on our organizing videos. We are going to be talking about Newton in particular. So I'm also trying this camera setup and just trying the stream as a whole. So the solo seems very straightforward. You've got all of your components for just a single player here. You'll need the action cards as well as those project cards. You're only going to need four randomly. So we're going to go ahead and grab those to start off. Sweet. So those are done. Awesome. We've got our player components. Those are good to go. Our boards. So we got our main and mat board over there. Nice. This will work well. And we'll go ahead and put the secondary board here. Let's see, can you see that decently? If you notice any sound reverberating or anything, let me know. Once again, I am just trying to get comfortable with this streaming stuff. But I think it looks good so far. We'll go ahead and grab our player board. Looks like I'm going books this time, cool. Make some room. Maybe something like this. How does that look? Awesome. Great. We've got all our components for our player here, our little reminder token, our big boy that's gonna be traveling around up here. Starting in base here. We start with our one guy here, a bunch of others in our storage, some of our travel cubes, our score marker, all sorts of library tokens that we're gonna start here. Do, do, do. All right. Three in each section. We start with our two dollars. We've got an extra token here. This is for the income track, I believe. More potential people. Our squares here for our control markers that we'll be putting out. Oh no. All right. So that should be good there. What else do I need to do here? Medicine income tiles, nice. Looks good. Looks like everything else is just randomized setup. Nice. I like where this is going. Go ahead and put the market of cards here so it's clearly visible. All right, so that's three for each section. Looks like these are some of the promo tiles. That'll be exciting, trying those out. They've got this weird feature where you actually flip them upside down. It's super weird, but it looks cool. A little bit of effort to get them to work, but I think it'll be neat overall. So you need them to be the ones that flip over to trigger our level twos and our level ones. All right. Okay, got the action cards for the player.
all the different technology and end game scoring banners. And we're just going to be playing with the base game as well as some of the expansion cards, but nothing to do with the expansion tiles. So the, the new discovery tiles, I should say. Everything else should be accounted for, though. Bit of a tedious setup on this one, but overall, I think it's pretty manageable. I like how all of the backs are uniform, so you can't necessarily, you know, cheat about where things are. Not like you'd really be thinking about that when you set this up. So, I mean, we'll see what happens when we actually start. It looks like lots of hospitals over in the east. Should be fun. And now all of our different bonus areas. Fun. So last time I played this, I went for the strategy where I just tried to get all of the bonuses before anybody else could. And it worked out surprisingly well. Uh, it was fun kind of chasing after the one ofs and limiting the options of the rest of the players, but I thought it was neat. Now, the only thing I'm having trouble with with the streaming is actually has to do with the sound. So for some reason, my phone is still shoving out the sound here. So that's kind of annoying. Ah, interesting. Ooh, those are powerful. Get an income tile of your choice. Gear, that seems pretty good. Increase your gear. I like it, seems very strong. All right, so let's see if I can fix this issue up here with the sound. Hmm. I don't know why, but it's not wanting to silence. You'll have to let me know if you can hear this or if the mic is picking up anything. All right, let's go ahead and just jump into it. So first off, we start with playing our action card. In the solo mode, there's no real big changes. It's just going to be up to you as the player to take your actions. So I'm just going to start off with one of these nice little books here. This is going to give me the gear, which is going to let me move my guy on the track here. It's going to give me that bonus, which is going to get me a free dude, which is pretty sweet. So that'll get me started up there. And it's my turn forever, which is kind of awesome with solo modes. So I'm going to go ahead and play the Joker. That's going to let me go an additional space. So one, two. And that's going to trigger this one, which is going to give me a free gear. So that'll go down in my booklets down here, which is pretty sweet. So building that engine right off the bat. Now, speaking of building engines, let's go ahead and... Hmm. Oh, interesting. This is my least favorite action. I absolutely hate doing the work action. So let's see what happens. Let's go ahead and build some cards. So I've got one card here. I'm going to grab a level one card. I can pay some potions to get some good things, um, get some more cards in the future. I think that this one is pretty strong. The flexibility of this card might be worth it, though, in the future, especially seeing as I have books. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that one. I think it's definitely worth it. So really nice. It goes right into your hand to use immediately. And then we shall go. Do we go on an adventure? I don't think there's anything that's saying that, hey, we need to do anything spectacular at first. Um, getting that initial income row might be solid, though. Getting up to the black spaces up there. Getting more cards also might be very strong. So let's see if we can make the best out of our situation here. So let's go ahead and go, let's build that engine a little bit more. So I'm gonna play this one and get a level two card. And I am gonna grab this double book. I think that's very strong. So that being said, let's go ahead and play said double book. And I've got two of those icons here. 
Let me check really quick. This is why we do this. I want to make sure if I can split these or not, because I do have three books here. I know I can get to that level three section, but can I split them up into smaller sections? If you know, please let me know in the comments below. Place a bookshelf. Hmm. Okay, so you can only ever play one bookshelf tile in the action. So this might not be worth picking up with that recruit card. This seems very solid, getting those potions early, start getting some of that engine building going. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And we are going to move, and let's move towards... Oh, we don't have all the bonus tiles up here either. Whoops. I have a feeling that I've put out way too many bonus tiles on this board. Whoops. <laughs> Whoops. Yep, you definitely leave the blue ones empty and just fill the gold ones. My bad. So I probably should just scrap this and start again. <laughs> Let's go ahead and do that. So I've got my starting resources. Let's go ahead and put all these back. One and two. All right, I got my great projects here. All my little cubes, get some of those bonus tiles, and we are taking them off of the blue ones. The blue ones are simply spaces that don't do anything special, which is unfortunate because getting a million bonuses sounded pretty awesome right off the bat. But now we'll never know. It's extremely limited. Holy cow, just look at it right off the bat. That's kind of crazy. So let's go ahead and get all of these set up appropriately. So we've got our gold, gold, only for four player. And there's just two more for solo. All right, so it looks like we're going north. Yeah, awesome. So let's go ahead and get started. Once again, if you could hear any feedback or anything, I'd love to get that fixed. So still trying this stuff out, but let's get started. So I've got my hand of action cards here, and we're gonna see what we want to do on this board. So our person in particular, we have a white and a black area that we wanna visit. So going up into this Northwest area might be our best bet. So let's go ahead and start off though with some initial engine building. So I'm gonna use this one here, which is gonna let me move up here, which is just gonna initially give me a free potion as well as two coins. Awesome. And we're gonna use that to move forward. Sweet, so that's our first bonus tile. Let's go ahead and build some of our engine as well. Let's use this little hat. And the hat lets us get new action cards. Let's see, we've got lots of choices here. Let's go ahead and use this one. Getting some flexibility might be early, be good early. This one could be between books or hats. And speaking of hats, let's go ahead and do the double hat, which is gonna get me a exploration with a free potion, which is pretty awesome. So we're gonna use said exploration, get that free potion, and then is gonna let me move up to here and drop off that cube. So I visited this new area, awesome. Let's continue forward. So we've got one more action in this first round. Kind of insane that it's basically done. This solo game goes extremely fast. Ooh, we could start building that library out. We'd have three symbols, but honestly, that's probably not a big deal here. Let's see if we can get any of this stuff super fast. We should probably make the most out of it, though. So let's go to... Hmm. We could go to work, we could do a joker tile and move quickly on to this other track. That might be powerful. Let's go ahead and do that. So we're gonna play the joker tile and I am going to continue my crusade to potions. So this is gonna give me two more potions and it's gonna score me three points. Sweet. And that's everything. So at the end of the round, we take all these cards, put them down to the bottom. We're gonna put out two more or three more for the next round. Put all these at the bottom, put out three more, put these at the bottom, and put out three more. Holy cow, lots of symbols here, jeez. And then the last thing that we're gonna do is look at our income stuff, nothing, 
And then we're going to take one of these cards and slide it under to form our engine. So I think that having this multi-purpose card down here seems very strong, specifically because it's either a book or a hat. So we get a lots of engine building here, which I think is super awesome. So that's that. And let's jump to the next round. All right, so we've got some choices here. I don't think I'm going to be visiting the tech trees over there until I'm able to put out another person. So that may involve me going and taking a look at potential options. But I think the best play for me is to play this one. So that's going to get me three books, which is kind of insane because that's going to get me one of those more powerful areas right off the bat. Now I'm looking here. And if I remember correctly, we're able to use those potions to count as a specific color or number or something. Let me rephrase. Ah, so it's three potion tokens to represent a location. So I have those three potion tokens. So I think that I'm actually going to do that. Uh, we're going to get some early lead on this. And looking at my board as a whole, I think that the cross here is going to be the one that we're going to have the hardest time getting to. So I'm going to spend three of my potions, and that's going to let me put a book where this cross belongs. So I'm almost at this full income level here, which is kind of awesome. So about to be generating a lot of good points. So pretty sweet. The next thing that I want to do is I want to eventually get over to this spot to claim some bonuses. So let's go ahead and do that. First off, let's play this little exploration, which will give me that potion right back. Let me move one space, and it's going to give me $2 and a point with that bonus token. Sweet. I am rolling in the dough. This is good stuff. And then we're going to continue with a double bonus, but I'm only going to do it a single time. And this is going to let me go here, which is, ooh, but maybe if I'm... If I'm crafty here, let's actually do this one first. So I unfortunately do need to play this guy because I need that book. So this is going to get me a cool dollar. So I'm quite broke. So that's four bucks here. Get my five. And then we will go back to the library. So this one is going to be, we're going to use the Joker on this one, which is going to get me that library icon. And that is going to spend these two as books. That's going to let me place this one up here. Awesome. And unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to quite get there this round with the exploration. But next round, I'll make it a priority. But for right now, let's go ahead and get some more cards here. And this is going to get me some flexibility again. I'm going to get a level two card. And I'm generating quite a lot of goodies here. And I'm able to get into that bookshelf well. I think that I'm actually going to grab this one here, this exploration token, trading some potions into some points. I think that'll give me some flexibility in the future. So I think it's pretty strong and it does not refresh. And that's the end of the round. So these are going to go back to the bottom of that deck. These are going to go back to the bottom, back to the bottom. And that's already a good portion of the game, which is, it's kind of insane. I'm still a little flabbergasted at how quickly this game goes. So we're going to go ahead and slide the book under here. Uh, not quite, actually. I need that book to trigger some actions. I need that one. I don't think I need this work icon anymore. So I have enough potions. I think that I'll be fine. And we'll get the rest of the cards up into the hand. Yep, should be good. Awesome. All right. Our next step, we put out these three things. I don't have any income yet. Unfortunately, I need to get on that. And some more goodies. I will say that's my one critique on this game is the way the income is tracked is kind of nonsensical. It's just like on the outside of your board. And sometimes you got to cross-reference and check what's going on. I'm going to start off with this exploration, which is going to get me a potion. And it's going to let me drop off one of my cubes, which is awesome. And that gets me that last location that I needed. So now I can play my book here. And that's going to let me place my last bookshelf here, which is in turn going to get me a potion. Hey, yo. And that gets me those four point income every round, which is pretty nice. Up next, we're going to go ahead and do some more exploring. And this one in particular is going to let me travel the distance. So this one is going to, I can pay a potion, which I do have, to claim two bucks and a point. 
Awesome. So a little bit of engine building there with getting the points and potions. And then I'm going to go traveling two spaces because I have covered two of them. Now, looking at the board, once again, we are trying to match uh, these different bookshelves and columns and rows. So I can either start a brand new track over here, or I can start working with something that I've already completed. And I think that sounds like the better place. So we're just simply going to move down here and put out another cube. So we're going to visit uh, Cordoba down here in Spain, which is pretty exciting. So that's that. Uh, next action, let's go ahead and rebuild that hand of cards. The more we play, the more we're losing. So let's go ahead and grab some of these books. It seems that these yellow books are going to be needed for trying to complete that row. So we add that to our hand. And that being said, let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to continuously be hopefully chaining over and over again with the explorations with those potions. So we're going to go ahead and use the book now. It's going to get us a dollar. And we are going to use our millions of book tokens here. And I'm going to pay the potion to represent a, the golden book. And we are going to go ahead and put our bookshelf right here for a second golden book, which is pretty sweet. So we are getting close to our four. Oh, and looks like Takaijo has joined us for a little bit. Sorry, my dog's been a little crazy. She says it looks fun. It's on our shelf of shame, sadly. This is a great one. It's actually quite calming. It's one that I enjoy. Um, my wife actually taught this to me. So there was one night where I was just, I was done learning games. And she said, hey, you relax. I'll teach this one to you. And it's been great. This is one that Dan has really said, hey, check this one out. He's really encouraged me to jump into it. And it's one that I am enjoying. And as you can see, the solo play here is quite straightforward. The game itself is very fast and the rounds are quick. It's one I recommend. So I'm having a good time. If it's on your shelf of shame, get it open. It's a blast. We have an organizing video for this coming out tomorrow. Uh, we got all of the new pieces in finally and it's a blast. So thanks for tuning in. I hope that you enjoy this and you can get an idea of how it's played. So it's the end of the round here. We pick one of these cards that is going to join our uh, engine at the bottom. So we're going to go ahead and add this Ooh, we want to keep that engine building here. So we're going to go ahead and take the book and put it down here because we already have one of those and we can use a joker in the future. So that works. The rest of our cards go back in our hand. We actually do get income because we have that complete row of books. So we're going to get four points for that. It'll go to nine. And then our cards are going to go to the bottom of the deck. And we're going to get some more choices. So we've got some more of those expansion cards, really interesting, where you get a bunch of goodies, but they only activate on specific rows. I do like these early game cards with the multi-resources. I think they are super strong. So let's go ahead and keep going. We're trucking on through. So I'm going to go ahead and continue my crusade across the countryside. We're going to start off with this potion. So I'll grab a potion and move one. I'll pay the $2 to cross the sea here, but it's going to get me that bonus, which is going to let me put another guy over here. Got to pay those two bucks to cross the sea. And then we'll continue our journey here. Let's see. We will pay. I'll need to pay a million dollars to do what I need to do there, but I think it'll be worth it. So we're going to go here. I'm going to pay that potion I just got to earn $2 and a point. It's gonna let me move two spaces this time. Hmm. And I'm gonna pay the $3 in order to pretend, or the $2 to pretend like I have an additional symbol. So I'm gonna go ahead and move three spaces. So we're gonna go one, pay the three to go there, two, and then pay three more dollars to cross here, which is gonna let me play one of my Grandmaster cards. So you have all of these Grandmasters that you start with, and whenever you reach one of these little scrolls, you're gonna be able to play one and do what it says. So this one's pretty sweet. You can immediately place a book somewhere and ignore the requirements. So you can just place it anywhere. And I think that will be super powerful placing it right here. It's gonna give us two income columns. So I am gonna go ahead and play Copernicus here. And he just says, hey, you may immediately play something somewhere. So I really enjoy that one. We are gonna do that now. That way we can ignore traveling up to the north. And we're gonna go right here, which is super close. We've got this one done. We've got this one done. We are on our way. So super exciting. We're super close to almost re-unlocking this additional $4. I like it. Let's keep going. Hmm. Let's see. We've got lots of different options here. We could go ahead and get some more cards. We could do some more exploring. I could move three spaces with this explore, but it looks like I'm going to need a little bit of money. So let's go ahead and do this book action first. It's going to get me a dollar. 
So that's pretty useful. And let's see if we can place a book somewhere. So we can, we've just visited Cordoba. So let's place this. We are super close to unlocking that new section. When this is cleared, we get $4 for playing it. All right. And that means that we have enough to take that explore action now. So let's get out of here. This is gonna let us move again. So once again, we have one, two, three symbols. Let's move out. We're gonna go one, two, three. I'll pay the $3. And that's going to get me two of those potions. Can never have enough potions. They count as wild for specific actions. And one of those actions is here. We'll use that wild token, copy the books, which is going to let me fill out one of these. And I need two green books. I don't have two green books. So that's what these potions are going to stand for. So I'll put out that book here and it'll count as those books. So sweet. Once again, end of round. We'll take all these cards. Didn't buy anything this round. It's probably going to be fine. Let's hope so. There's only one round left after this one. So the playthrough is almost over. But maybe it was a good play. Maybe it wasn't. I feel like I've got a lot of income on the books this time, which is kind of cool. I've yet to do this strategy the first time I focused really hard on this track. So we'll see if it pays off. I'm going to go ahead and slide this exploration one under. And the rest are going to return to my hand. And I do get income now based on the completed rows and columns. I have four and three points. So that's 11. No, that's 10 points. Four and three, seven points. <laughs> I can count, I swear. And then we have four points here and we're missing the one there. So just four more points, 17 to 21. So that's everything here. It is now the last round of the game. I feel like it's already gone by so quickly. I'm not sure exactly what I should be doing. Uh, let's go ahead and get some value off these actions. So we need to just start shelving our library. So we're gonna play this one for a dollar and a gold book. And let's look at all the things that we could accomplish here. Oh boy. So we've got a book. I don't know if we're gonna be able to complete a lot of sections here. So maybe it's not worth playing this one quite yet. So we'll keep this guy in our hand. It actually might be best to do a large travel action or maybe even work up on these tracks up here. Let's see, so we actually need lots of choices. So I think I'm actually gonna play this one here, get that potion so that I can sub for potential icons in the future. And that's gonna let me move two spaces because I did shelve that one later. So let's go with our movement of, hmm. I could spend the $2 to move additional spaces, but I don't think it's worth it. One, two, three, four. I declare a thumb war. I think the best play is to pay the $2, move through here. So it's one. And we will go, I'll pay the additional that's not quite enough. So we'll pay the two additional dollars and we'll go pretend it's a different symbol. Go here, put out one of our cubes. So this will give us that purple section. Now that we have that, we will continue our movement. We now have three icons. We'll trade in that potion again. Ah, I don't know if it's worth it because we might want to keep that potion. <laughs> Thank you, Tia. I appreciate it. <laughs> oh boy. So Tia, what's preventing you from getting this one started on your from your shelf of shame? Hmm. There's just so many choices. I think exploring might be the way to go. Hmm. I feel like I have not done much this game that's worth writing home about. Let's go ahead and complete this one here. So we're going to use our book here, which is going to get me a dollar. And that's going to let me place the bookshelf here, which is going to score me two points for later. I'll take it. And then lastly, three actions left on this whole game. Unreal. I don't think it's gonna happen. I need blue books and I have neglected to do so. 
We can get some points through traveling, get some money through traveling. I don't know if we're going to be able to actually get anything here. So we could do that. Let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to pay the one potion here, get the $2 in the point for playing such. And that's going to let me move three spaces. We're going to go one, two, three. I'll pay the dollar, which is going to let me put out this cube here. Ayo. That's what we needed, because that'll get us the points here. We'll use the Joker, and that's going to copy the book. We're just going to let me put this last book here, because we just visited the white, and that's going to let me play one of these Masterwork cards. Awesome. So we have lots of choices here. We have that triple explore, and we can place as many cubes as we want during that explore action, which is pretty dang powerful. Now, however, we don't really have the money to travel using said action. The other thing we have here is Margaret Cravendish. It says that you can, I believe, you just remove a whole stack of these things. I'm going to check really quick, because that seems really good to just score eight points, because that's our last row of books here. And that could be very powerful. So her whole effect is... This is Margaret Cavendish. So her effect here says, permanently remove from your supply the two topmost bookshelf tiles. So unfortunately it's only gonna be two. I don't think it's gonna be enough. We're off by one to score those eight points, uh, but she's worth eight points on her own. Well, we also have Robert Boyle here. I think he has a similar effect to the Mr. Other guy that we have, Mr. Boyle. Mr. Boyle here says, perform study action. You can divide the value of the book. That's so good, but I don't think it's gonna be enough. We could place into, how we could place into some of these regions, but it's not gonna give us anything particularly fancy. So I think the best play is to just do the Margaret Cavendish. I think that is the way to go because it is going to actually get us six points just for playing her. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. We're going to remove those books. And that leaves us with one action left. Oh, boy. So let's see. Uh, I have no idea. It's so difficult. So Sakaijo has our response. Let's see. So Tia says it's on Duke. So we've been trying to play teach games on friends, mutual shelves of same. So we haven't quite gotten to this one. OK. That totally makes sense. If the, everybody has a pileup of games, it's going to be hard to get yours played. And that totally makes sense, especially when everybody's in that same situation. And he also says, game night tomorrow. Seeing the playthrough is making you feel inclined to read the rules. So I do think this one's actually extremely straightforward. It's one of the best rule books that I've seen in a while. It's really laid out well. It's going to be helpful with everything. And the game is really clean. So there is really just the different actions on the action cards that you need to know. And there's five of them. And once you know that, the game just makes sense. It's all about just picking up little bonuses and building your engine by collecting those symbols. So if you can do that, it works really well. Uh, so just know those actions and you're going to be fine. It's a weird game because as you play, it kind of feels like you're not doing much at a time. But the more you're doing these actions, the more bonuses you're getting. It's a lot of little actions that make big plays. And I think that's why it's satisfying, is because you are building up to this final moment. Now, speaking of the final moment, I've got that last action, and I don't think there's anything incredible I can do. The best I can do is uh, get a card or move. So honestly, at this point, let's just go ahead and call it. I'll move my guy one space. And uh, I guess I could count it as two. So I could potentially, I think the best thing I could do is get a point and a potion. So we'll go ahead and do that. So I'll move that here, get my extra point by spending my dollar and my potion. Now, once again, if you are tuned in here, uh, please let me know, can you hear okay? How does this camera setup look like? Is this an okay format to do it in? I'd love to hear feedback because this is something that I do want to do because if you are not aware, I do do a lot of solo playthroughs because I'm constantly learning games and constantly trying to make sure I know all the rules perfectly so that I can teach and reteach over and over again. So it's something that I am constantly going through. So let me know if the audio is okay. I can hear it from my phone, but I don't know if it's going to pick it up here on the mic. So just let me know. Let me know if everything's going fine. But it looks like we are at the end of this game here. Let's see how I did here. I don't think I did particularly well, but at least I knew what was going on. So that's half the battle. Let's see. We finished here. So we get our points based on our master works here. So I get eight points for these guys. So that puts me at 31. And then I'm also going to get points for my income. I've completed a lot of those. So that is going to be 7, 9, 12, 
16, 18 points from that. That's pretty good. So it's going to put me at 49. Whew. That was quite the jump of points. And then the last thing that we check, doo -doo -doo. objective spaces. Now this is where I failed spectacularly at. I did not need a single objective space. I was too focused on my library up here. Didn't do enough of the family tree building, or I guess this is the hereditary tree. And I think that's it. Um, yeah. So let's see how I did. Oh my gosh, I did terribly. So I have a score of 49. And that means, so being illiterate here is a score of zero to 40. So I'm not quite illiterate, but I'm a scribe. So I'm just the guy that copies the text. I'm as good as a good old control C, control V. So that's my quick playthrough of Newton. You know, I'm, I'm actually quite satisfied with this solo mode. It plays very similarly to the uh, multiplayer version. However, you're not really competing with anybody for these bonus tokens. So you definitely can map out your actions. The game is fast. Uh, this playthrough is 35 minutes, so very quick to set up. I am also quite pleased with the organization method that we have for this. It really did help out with that setup time. So glad to know it works. So once again, that video will be out tomorrow so that you can see it a little bit more in depth. Uh, if you have any questions before we close this up, because I'm not sure if you want to watch me clean this, I guess maybe that's something that could be useful. I don't think so. But hey, if you like it, go for it. But if you have any questions or anything afterwards, uh, let me know. Thanks for joining us. I really appreciate you tuning in, Tia. I'm glad that you were able to catch the end. It was nice to have you. Good conversation. I hope you can get this one played. It's a blast. I know that we everybody has a shelf with a, at least one game that they want to play. So hopefully you've got a kind of a basic idea of this game as a whole, and it's something that you're able to jump into quickly. So I know for myself, I am planning on getting Inish to the table as soon as possible. I just did a video with my friend Dan over at Chairman of the Board, and he and I talked about the games that we really want to play. And this one, the game Inish was one that was on both of our lists. So I, we took it upon ourselves to find some copies and get it played. That way we could talk about it during our next corporate cardboard. So hopefully that will come to fruition. And hopefully next time I play this game, I will be better than a scribe, but at least I wasn't illiterate. So that's something, isn't it? <laughs> but thanks so much for watching, everybody. Once again, if you have any questions or anything, please leave some comments below. But I'll talk to you guys later. See ya.